Uh, so today we're going to be open planning a property that we recently purchased to renovate. So we're going to show you what we did before. At this point, he realized. We cut the wire in the process. During. <laughs> and after. Open planning the house. No sugar whatsoever. Are you saving? So Jonathan, what are you doing? I am. Um, I've marked up a point there where I can see the um, existing wall compared to the old wall for the house and I know where the... Yeah. <laughs> the joist is over here and I'm not over there where the joists are so this is just hollow inside here, hopefully. It, it was at this point he realized he cut the wire in the process so i managed to squeeze my phone camera inside the ceiling and what we discovered is that there is an existing rsg beam that was installed to support the back end of the house as there was a previous extension before we purchased the property now the new beam we have to install has to support this back wall that was previously there as well as the wall we're removing after looking at the first part of this video, you can kind of see why it was important that I exposed the ceiling before the structural engineer came along. It's a lot more easier for him to see the structure of the ceiling and then he can make a more educated decision on his calculations. Now you're probably wondering why am I drilling holes in the floor? We are basically checking if there's an existing footing in the ground that is sufficient enough to hold the weight of a more thicker wall due to the large RSJ beam that's gonna be installed. It's really important also that you ask your structural engineer if there might be any additional work required that's similar to what we're doing here, as this stage actually costs us another thousand pounds added on to the original price, which can really throw off a lot of people. And if you don't know what a footing is, well, the next clip will kind of show you that. Few hours later. It's in, it's in. I'm just yeah, the clay in it. Yeah, clay. Yeah. <laughs> Get here now, my God. One important thing to remember is to make sure you communicate well with building control and ask them exactly what they want to see. For example, we had to show them that this footing was one meter deep. <laughs> Now we filled up the hole with concrete mix. All we gotta do is give it a few days for it to dry. Two days later. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, today we're propping up all the acros to support both sides of the wall. So you can see it's resting there. That joist is resting on the chimney rest. So. And uh, we can have a quick look on the other side as well, just so you can see what it looks like. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it can also be beneficial to remove the whole ceiling and just plaster everything, which is what we kind of did in the end anyway. At this point, I think the RSJ beam just got delivered. Okay, there's the beam. Gigantic beam. Boom. In case you don't know why the um, wood noggings are inside the RSJ beam there, I can explain a little bit later where it makes a bit more sense. Just cutting the RSJ down to size. <laughs> Just in case you haven't been following our previous videos, this renovation will be aired on TV this year. Hence the guy with the crazy camera equipment. Guys, please make sure you wear this because of this. Wow. So now the wall's removed. That wall was really, really strong. So it's taken a good like five hours to completely remove. But this is what it looks like after. Then we started uh, building the breeze block 
and obviously at the bottom of that we put a damp proof course just to stop any rising damp in the future oh yeah if you can see those noggings that i mentioned earlier the reason why you put them in is just it's one method of applying the plasterboard onto the onto the rsj beam so it's actually something to screw into basically at this point i'm not really sure what jonathan is doing i guess he just wanted to feel useful so i just let him carry on Now that the steel beam is kind of resting on the actual bricks and it's almost fully installed, this is pretty much what it looks like. Let's just take you over to the other side so you can get a more closer look. Okay, so there's a huge amount of weight being pushed from the upstairs floor. So that could actually cause the beam to crush the bricks underneath. That's why you got to use this blue engineering brick on the screen that you can see. These just don't get crushed as easy. And in some circumstances, um, builders use slate as well because it's got a high compressive strength. The acros are still in place. That's just so all the cement can harden in time and then we can remove that after. Now, these are the things that can go very wrong if you don't use building control. Obviously, the house can potentially collapse on you. You can have fire risks if you don't use the right plasterboard. <laughs> and you can have legal financial repercussions. For example, you can receive fines, your council could ask you to knock down whatever you've done, and your property will be reduced in value. We have so many renovation videos coming up on this channel. Is it dented it? Yeah. That's not his job, he's a bloody roofer. He was doing it for us though. Yeah, but it's not nice, that's a roofer. Yeah. And if you want to steal our tips and our tricks, just subscribe to the channel and like our video. Until the next video.